the people who can just code, like I mentioned earlier, who've like been coding all their lives, they don't have soft skills. The majority of them are in danger in the future. There are four sort of leverage multipliers you can think of. There's code, there's media, there's capital, and there's labor. The long-term future, I'm talking like 10, 20 plus years of long-term employment is pretty dire. Learn to build, learn to sell. If you can do both, you become unstoppable. Codesmith will bring all sorts of experience and that's the way the future is going. You need to be somewhat of a generalist in the future. It's not going to be math skills that will be the reason you win. It'll be... I'll get to the software engineering now very quickly, but a few years ago, I was in investment banking after I left college. And my story is no private school or anything like that. You can check my LinkedIn or my personal website for more of my personal childhood story. But fast forward, I went to investment banking after university. It's a place where your brain turns to cabbage is what I always say, because you're basically working 100 hours a week to do Excel PowerPoints and it's all status signaling. It's, it's basically Hollywood. It's all perception. It's not a place where, you know, if you have a curious mind, it nourishes your mind. And it's not a place long term where you can live a happy and peaceful life because end of the day, that for me is important. So I left. I did a whole bunch of things in tech, which were all non-technical. Uh, so things like business development or product management in startups. I had a swing at some of my own startups, not venture backed, but sort of bootstrapped. They call it indie hacking now, the cool kids, but if a bunch of projects failed. Two of them did okay, but it was nothing beyond like a salary or something. And then I said, okay, I, I have a few months to like take a deep breath and explore for the first time. Cause since childhood, I was always in like survival mode. I started reading and listening to anything and everything I could. One of the ideas which comes from Naval Ravikant is the idea of leverage. There are four sort of leverage multipliers you can think of. There's code, there's media, there's capital, and there's labor. If you code something, it's not like, let's say you turn up to a nine to five or you own a corner store or you own a restaurant. You have to physically be there. You know, your input equals output in terms of it's, it's linear. And code is nonlinear in the sense that if code does well, you code it once and then it can earn for you online. You have a few customers. It could be, you know, I don't know, you're selling an $8 SaaS subscription. doesn't have to be something crazy, but you're then earning money while you're sleeping. So that's leverage. Mm -hmm. I realized code, not only for the leverage points, but also for the importance of, you need to know code because if you don't tell the software what to do, eventually the software will tell you what to do. Namely, the notion of optionality. I think the long-term future, I mean, I'm talking like 10, 20 plus years of long-term employment is pretty dire. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, there's going to be a lot of automation generally. You need to be tech proficient. It gives you optionality. So optionality to build startups on the side, to get a job in tech. And jobs in tech, I think, as a software engineer, it's one of the easier jobs of society. Like, who are we kidding? We're not working in a coal mine. We're not doing any physical manual labor. Okay, there's other office jobs, but I've had other office jobs like finance where your brain turns to cabbage. You're just doing Excel, PowerPoint, and email all day, every day. Nonsense meetings. So software engineering is direct feedback. It's, it feels like a puzzle, really. It's rewarding. It's satisfying. You get immediate feedback for what you're building. I like to build... And the last thing I'll say on this point, Naval Ravikant himself says, learn to build, learn to sell. If you can do both, you become unstoppable. What I was getting at earlier when I said like the long-term future of corporates is kind of dire, I meant that one needs to know how to like build or code, but those who can only code and not have any soft skills, I think that may be pretty dire in the long-term future. I mean, there's a lot of talk about that already. I think a lot of people that I've had the pleasure to code with at Codesmith are the type of people who come from, let's say, other industries. For example, teachers, accountants, photographers, all walks of life. And that's what I love about Codesmith. And they are phenomenal coders because of the high bar of entry. They come to Codesmith. Well, they've worked, they've been public speaking. They have empathy. They have all these characteristics where it's not just I've sat at a keyboard, but in the corporate world, these people who've been coding since they were kids, they can just code. They, they can 
not really put together a good sentence, whether it's in writing, it's in speaking, and with more and more automation in the long term. Peter Thiel himself, the founder of PayPal and like a Silicon Valley OG, Peter Thiel has said, you know, in the in the future, it's not going to be math skills that will be the reason you win. It'll be verbal skills. It'll be soft skills. So you got to marry the two. A hundred percent. Yeah. In Tesla itself, where we have young people who are, let's say, interns or just come out of university. When I mentor these people, if they've been coding since a young age, I tell them, look, the best thing you could do in your free time Go to something like Toastmasters, which is public speaking. It's free. In your workplace, you can nominate yourself. You can do things, be proactive, like tell your manager, can I run these meetings? Can I run the stand-ups with you every day? Or So you're being more proactive. And really, after a few reps, you just get better. You get comfortable. It's like running into the fire of it. The growth is on the other side of the discomfort, which, God, it sounds so trite, but it's, it's, it's the truth. So it was like, okay, I'm going to go to, in, in the evenings. I'm going to go to Toastmasters. The weekends, I'm going to, I don't know, read these books. In some of my free time, I used it to kind of upskill. And then that goes a long way. But also as a means of necessity, another positive black swan was in my teens and early 20s while studying, I always worked in sales jobs, like very aggressive, cold calling sales jobs in London, where almost every week, part, like a lot of people just get the cuts because you got to hit a certain number of sales on the phone. I think that helps a lot. That's why I always tell young people, the technical skills, if you're eager, they'll come to you. Definitely work on those, but marry it with the soft skills. A lot of people have this expectation, from my point of view anyway, where they think, okay, I just turn up to whatever boot camp, any boot camp, and then I have a job at the end of it, like happy days. But firstly, that's not how it works. If, if that's your mind frame, a boot camp is not for you or any type of ed education. Uh, because if you think you're going to do that, then you're definitely not going to be able to learn by yourself, which is an even complete different path. My bootcamp experience was I actually sucked at coding, but you keep going. And it's the notion of compounding, which I have to throw another Charlie Munger quote in there, but he says, rule number one of compounding never interrupted. So like a lot of times I had heavy imposter syndrome, still do. And when I was Coding, I was like, damn, I really don't know much, but you actually know a lot more than you do at, at any given point in time. And you just keep going. Well, the future, we've already seen something like the tool Devin, which is the, the first sort of autonomous software engineer. I think there's estimates. It's like 12% as complete as of a human being software engineer so far, but it can do basic things like pass some technical interviews and take some Upwork jobs and complete them. What, I, what I'm getting at is the people who can just code, like I mentioned earlier, who've like been coding all their lives, they don't have soft skills. The majority of them are in danger in the future because my view is that every company will have, every big corporate will have a few, just a few, maybe five or 10 or two, who knows, depending on the size, just a few of these quote unquote hundred X engineers who have, again, been coding since they were kids, but they're another level. They're not like your regular coding since kid. They get paid 10x of everyone else. So you have those people who will be kept, maybe five of them will be kept in the corner. It's like, these are the people we don't speak with. Leave them alone for crisis management or preventing hackers or whatever, whatever. That's like a small minority, like a few percentage points. And then you have the majority who can code, but they'll become obsolete in my view. And then the software engineer will become technically, it will become like a technical product manager, which is you need to know how to code. You need to know some UX, UI design. You need to know how to do even product management. A lot of product management is the non-technical aspect as well, understanding the psychology of users. So like UX, UI design, speaking in a lot of management meetings, all of these things comes from pretty much soft skills and the aptitude to learn and just like a more generalist mindset rather than I'm just going to learn to code and I'm going to do this for the rest of my life because even a lot of the FANG people I've worked with, they've been in FANG for like 10 years, like Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google. And then they come to somewhere like Tesla. And then after 10 years of coding, they just want to be like a staff product manager, but they're a technical staff product manager. So it's given them the optionality to now lean into something, which is marrying the soft skills with the technical skills and their future is so bright more than anyone else in tech, I think, because these people can code, which you need to know because the future is AI is going to do 
some of the code for you or a lot of it, but it still will need a human being to make the overall architectural decisions or the trade-off decisions, or as you say, these elements which humans can only understand or need to do. Because as an example, if software is going to write a blog, already a lot of writers I know who have sold like a million plus books, like some of the best-selling authors, and even they're critical of, everyone's critical of, you can just firstly tell when an AI has written it. And I would say Codesmith for me was a positive black swan where I exposed myself to all sorts of interesting outcomes is I've not really had any social life. Like I'm just behind this desk. If it's not learning to code, it's podcasting, it's writing online, it's messaging interesting people. We have access to a tool which none of our ancestors had access to. And I think it gives you, you know, access to people and knowledge that was never available before. So it's down to people if they want to leverage that or not. So that's it's the biggest blessing because without the internet, I would have never met Will Sentence or been in Codesmiths.